Time now for the Indians Minor League Player of the Week, and it's captain's first baseman, Jesus Aguiar. This past week, Aguiar hit 409, had three runs scored, three doubles, two homers, six runs batted in in six games. He collected four multi-hit games and has an OPS 1.253 in that week. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, very impressive right here. We talked about him earlier. You know, I like what this kid brings to the table. Very nice size kid. Even though he's young, he can move through the system if he continues this hitting streak. Definitely an interesting guy to watch. Welcome back to the show. Time now for our Indians uh, minor league magazine. Focus on the future. He may not be a menacing figure at the plate, but Jordan Henry, once he gets on base, look out. Will Ewick has more. Welcome into this week's Focus on the Future. Today I'm joined with Jordan Henry. Jordan, thanks for coming along here and, uh, and, and taking the time to talk to us. Your brother plays in the Tiger system, yes. three years older than you. So I imagine growing up, it was a lot of competition between you two. Yeah, it was a ton of competition. Uh, it's just about every sport you can think of. Uh, probably the most two main sports we were competitive was probably actually tennis and ping pong, actually, believe it or not. So got pretty intense. <laughs> now, how does that relationship work now with you and the Indian system and him and one of the division rivals in the Detroit system? Well, you know, we still talk all the time, obviously, and, um, you know, try to help each other out as much as we can. And, you know, it's just neat, you know, be in the same area and be able to play against each other like we did last year. So, you know, it's different, but it's neat. Now, you mentioned tennis, and you were actually one of the up-and-comers in amateur tennis for a while. <laughs> what made you switch from that, which you had a promising future in to go to baseball? Well, um, you know, I stopped playing a while back, probably, you know, competitively around 16 years old or so. But, um, you know, I just kind of, you know, like baseball more and enjoyed it, being around, you know, team more and stuff like that. So, you know, just kind of had to choose sooner or later because, you know, they're both kind of more summer sports and all. So just, you know, decided to go with baseball. I still like tennis, though. A lot of eye-hand coordination in tennis. Yeah, it Talk is. Talking about the transition of that skill into baseball, because obviously there's going to be one batting, right? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's done nothing but help me out, you know, baseball-wise, because the hand-eye coordination is huge in both sports. And, um, you know, I've always felt like, you know, I've been able to, you know, use what I have in tennis, you know, in, in, in baseball as well. So. A lot of the uh, scouting reports on you says you're the definition of a slap hitter. What, what, is that, what does that mean to you? How are you a slap They're hitter? They're probably right. Uh, <laughs> Just, um, you know, I don't hit the ball with a lot of power or anything. I just try to make contact and put the ball in play and, you know, try to use my speed a lot in my game. And, you know, I guess I, you know, have a short swing and all, and I hit a lot of balls on the ground. So, it's, you know, it's probably right. <laughs> you, mentioned, you, you mentioned your speed. Uh, take me through, you're on base, and you think you can get a jump on a pitcher. How, how does that whole process work? How do you decide when you can get a jump in, on this pitcher and, and catcher? Well, you know, sometimes it has to, you know, do with, you know, obviously how fast the pitcher is to the plate and, you know, what count it is and what hitter you got up. Maybe they'll th they're throwing a lot of off-speed pitches to that guy. You know, just a lot of stuff, you know, comes into it, different pitchers and stuff. And, you know, if it's a lefty, you got to read them or first move and, you know, how their move is to first. So you just have to look at those things in a dugout kind of before you get out there and kind of prepare yourself before. Was there a guy that you kind of idolized growing up? Well, um, you know, I was born in Houston, so I kind of grew up an Astros fan, and I was pretty pretty big on Craig Biggio probably growing up the most, so big fan of him. So you're here in Akron, a team that's had a lot of success recently. Uh, does that have any kind of pressure added to you coming in this year? Uh, not really, you know. Um, you know, I was glad to have some experience up here last year. I got to play half the season and, you know, with some of the same guys and uh, get a feel for the field and everything and the other teams. and this league and you know I feel good you know starting the season off and you know not too much pressure just going out there and playing. As you work up the steps of the minor league system uh, you know you're always trying to get better is there some goals that you have set that you want to reach personally this year? Um, you know I just want to you know obviously, obviously do the best I can and uh, go out there and you know you try not to worry about numbers too much and you know they'll get in your head but uh, you know I just feel like if I go out there and you know do what I feel like I can do, you know, they'll be where they're at and, you know, just got to take it one game at a time and I, I, more than anything, probably just try to stay consistent more than anything, so. You're under a new manager this year with uh, Chris Tremme. What's the transition been like? What's different this year? Um, you know, we had uh, Skinner last year, you know, he was well, up here, him and Holby, and I was, I guess I split half, but uh, two good managers last year I had and Tremme's another good one. Got to, you know, meet him last year and be around him a little bit and, you know, he's a really good manager, good player coach, and a good guy to play for. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank Back you. to you guys. 
All right, Will, thanks very much for that. Jordan Henry, definitely a guy to watch. There's the vitals on him. Seventh round selection in the 2009 draft. Well, yeah, you look at what Jordan Henry's been able to do in a short amount of time so far, and he's moving up the system very quickly as a position player and as an outfielder. He's got speed, so if you have speed, it kills. And, I mean, for him to get up to the big leagues as quickly as possible, they'll be able to use that. All right, much more ahead still on Indians Minor League Magazine as we'll get you set with the schedules and also uh, give you our final thoughts as well. Check this out. Kids hitting some water balloons with the bat at Canal Park. Make sure you stay tuned. This is Indians Minor League Magazine. Standings check for you for the Indians Minor League affiliates. Columbus in first place, uh, Akron in sixth, Kenston. In second place, Lake County eighth, and Mahoning Valley in first place. It's very early now, we understand. Let's take a look now at the schedule. Columbus has a home and home series with Toledo before coming home to take on Gwinnett. Don't forget Thursday's game, 7 o'clock here on STO. Akron's at Binghamton before coming home to take on Reading. The first 1,000 fans get a Charles Nagy throwback bobblehead on Saturday. There it is. It's been on our desk for the entire show. Looks kind of like Charlie. Kind of. When he pitched in the minors, right? All right, Kinston, let's go back to our schedule as their all-star break before heading to Salem. Lake County has its all-star break before heading to Fort Wayne. And Mahoning Valley hosts Batavia before heading to Auburn. We're back with your final segment for Indians Minor League Magazine this week, Jason. P pitching was mainly the focus uh, with some of the guys we talked about at the top of the show. Uh, but when you take a look at this pitching depth in the Indian system, you hear a lot of lip service paid. But this is really true this year with the Indians because you see those prospects Triple A, double A, single A, and it seems somebody new every week is doing something special. Yeah, and that's very true. And you look at what these guys have been able to do in a short amount of time. You know, some of the guys are going through their all-star break, and that's going to be nice to give those couple days off. But these guys have really stepped up this year, and it shows what the draft classes have been the last couple of years. And now you're starting to see if the Indians need somebody at the big league level, they might be able to trade these guys to get somebody. And that's, you know, the tough part about the business part of it. But that's the fun part about it, too. All right, we're out of time with Indians Minor League Magazine. Thanks for watching us this week. We're going to take you out with some great defense in Kinston. Don't forget to find us on Facebook as well. For Jason Stanford, I'm Al Pulowski. Have a good one.